Now we're going to move on to our cases for this chapter. So we have, again, multiple vector uh, cases, like we had multiple properties. So let me first tell you what to expect. First of all, we're going to discuss Cartesian components of a vector in 2D and 3D. So first of all, Cartesian components. Uh, what you need... You'll notice that actually I've already mentioned many of these in the properties and they're simple, but what we're doing with cases is that we're discussing the sort of questions you can get. So, uh, in other words here, uh, we're trying to, uh, we know that we in components we can have it in 2D and we can have it in 3D and our Cartesian components, which means the components on the usually x, y plane, here it's actually in the i, j, k plane. Uh, so what we know is that this is in terms of i and this is in terms of j, uh, i and j. And here it's in terms of i, j, and k. And these are the Cartesian components of a vector. When we want to write a vector, we're going to say it's 2i plus 3j or 2i plus 3j plus k. Please add the arrows. I'm just not going to do it now because... I'm, there are many, everything I write that's variable is a vector technically. And then uh, we know that if we want to find their modulus, we're going to find the square roots. And here the same thing, but we're going to add the k factor. And by that, that sums up how we use the Cartesian components. As I said, I've already mentioned this before in, in the properties, so it's easy. But now let me provide you with an example. So here, let's see. Our example gives provides us with the given that uh, point A, let me just go to a new page. Okay, our example here states that point A and B have coordinates as follows. A is 2, T, sorry, 5, and T minus 1. And then we have a point B, which is 2, T, T, and 3. The first part of the question asks you to find the modulus of AB. How do you know they were looking for modulus? You'll find those two signs at the sides. Now, what we know is, when, if we want to add state A, first of all, let us find AB as a vector. We know that if we want to say AB, it is uh, technically AO plus OB in order to get rid of the centers here. And we know that this is negative the position vector of A, plus the position vector of b. And that is exactly what we are given here. So we if we want to write it, it's going to be negative into uh, t5 t minus 1 plus uh, our b is 2t t and 3. And the resultant is going to be t t minus 5 and 3 plus 1, it's 4 minus t. And that would be our position vector, uh, I mean, that would be our AB. Now, if we want to find the modulus of that, what we're going to do is that we're going to find the square root of the first squared plus the second squared plus the third, but plus the third squared, so 4 minus t all squared. And all that is under the square root. And if we expand this, we're going to end up with 3t squared minus 18t plus 41. And that would be the modulus they're looking for for AB. Then the second part of the question moves on to ask you about differentiate uh, the modulus of AB squared. And then find the value for T where AB is minimum. Now we're moving on to differentiation. See how uh, vectors can actually include other chapters. Here, the way we're going to answer this is, we first of all, we need to differentiate AB squared, so we let us square it first. Since it's under the square root, it's going to turn into 3T squared minus 18T plus 41 when we square it. Differentiating, then we are trying to find here dy by dt, uh, and that is going to equal, multiply the power by the coefficient and decrease the power by 1, and do the same here, and the constant turns to zero. And this will be the differentiation of the square of the modulus of AB. And then uh, we know that differentiation gives us the slope. And if we have a graph for AB, um, technically 
the point where its minimum is going to be when the different when you differentiate this into zero. This is all C3, you can go back to it, but yeah. So when 60 minus 18 equal to zero, it is going to either give us the maximum value or the minimum value. And if it gives if it gives us one value, then there is either no maximum or minimum. So here our t is going to actually be 18 over 6, which is 3. And if we uh if we even differentiate this more, if you remember more of C3, this is going to give us uh, 6 only, and since this is positive, then the point here is minimum. And this would be answering the second part of the question. Now, if we go to this, uh, the, fin the final part, which is uh, C, they ask us to find the minimum value of a B the magnitude of AB. We only found the, the T that gives us the minimum. Now all we have to do is replace. Now what is the magnitude of AB? We got it here. It is the square root of 3T squared minus 18T plus 41. So if we want to find the minimum, we're going to simply replace these by 3 squared and this by 3. And that will give us our final value which is, of course, 3 times 9, 27, minus 18 times 3, which is 4, carry. So that would be 54, minus 54 plus 41, and this would give us the final value, which is uh, going to be radical 14. Oops, yeah. And that would give us radical 14, and that would be the minimum value of our A. As you saw, Cartesian components are used to apply, are, you, are used when we're applying them to uh, actually two questions with the with modulus questions with okay so components we're talking about the modulus we're talking about representations and we can include other chapters like differentiations for minimums maximums etc the questions lead you to know how to solve but you should know your background information as well as your basic Cartesian components of a vector and that would be the first case that you can face